Try Second uh, Corinthians 13. Go there first. Thank you for the good singing. <clears throat> good music. One thing we can say we have good music here. May not be the newest hit songs, but they are, have been a hit with God. Some of those songs are 300 years old. So in 2 Corinthians, we'll go over there and uh, then we'll study in the uh, Proverbs 24, illustration. One old preacher told me many years ago, he said, every New Testament truth has an Old Testament story to go along with it. If you go back, you'll find that doctrine lived out in the lives of the Old Testament. Now in uh, 2 Corinthians 13 and verse 5, we're talking about allowing ourselves to be examined and to be tested. So as we stand and read 13.5 of uh, 2 Corinthians, Paul is closing out the writing of the first letter, now the second letter. And Paul says to, what's the, first, what's the word here? Examine others. Examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith, prove your own selves, know you not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except you be reprobates, or a, still a sinner in your sins. So Lord, we ask you now to help us to take inventory of ourselves, so that we may be diligent servants most high God. So help us to see what Solomon or whoever wrote this part of Proverbs and see what they saw and learn from it tonight. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Thank you for allowing yourselves to be examined and tested or how to remain diligent servants. We could also name it that. Now over in uh, Proverbs 24, we go over there and we see a farming story, a country countryside setting there. So we see Paul commands us to examine our lives so others will not have to. And what we think of this, what we, what we really believe truly shows. What we really believe truly shows. Uh, Jesus said the fruit is on the tree and uh, what you see is what you get that tree. And so we have the illustration here of a person who refused to examine themselves. Uh, and this is a farming lesson, as we see in 24, verse 30 to 34. So uh, we'll read <clears throat> this uh, little short story here about a person, evidently, that just, uh, I don't know, somebody just didn't care. I went by the field of the slothful, 2430 of Proverbs. I went by the field of the slothful in the vineyard, and by the vineyard of the man void of understanding. <clears throat> Lo, it was all grown over with thorns and nettles. It covered the face thereof, and the stone wall there was broken down. Then I saw and considered it well. I looked upon it and received instruction. Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth, and thy want as an armed man. And so we see here uh, a lesson to be learned in these uh, five things that we'll see in these verses. Now verse 30, first of all we see the lesson location, all right? What is this location? Verse 30 says, It went by the field of the slothful and by the vineyard of the man void of understanding. Sometimes I would call this the uh, field of the lazy and the farm of the ignorant. The field of the lazy and the farm of the ignorant. 
Now in 2 Timothy chapter 1, the Bible tells us that we don't have to be people without knowledge and understanding or wisdom. And uh, so we have here in 2 Timothy chapter 1. So the field of the lazy, the farm of the ignorant, uh, this man has no power and no understanding, it seems. I mean, this is a lesson location. So in uh, 2 Timothy 1, 7, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power. So every Christian has this supernatural power to move forward and be diligent. What's the opposite of diligent would be negligent. So there are so many millions of negligent, there's more negligent Christians in America than diligent Christians in America. That's why we have the curses of God on our nation and the world. He has not given us the spirit of fear, but God has given us uh, the spirit of power and of love and of a what? We can't understand if we want to understand. But uh, lazy people don't understand because they never learn anything. Their, their goal is not to learn something new every day. The Alzheimer's studies show that if we continue to learn, continue to learn, that we more than likely will not have to deal with those kind of things because we're making connections all the time in our brain. It's reconnecting. And so when we don't, when we get slothful like this person here, and we don't want to learn new things, then the brain reads, well, we don't need those connections anymore. We don't need those neurons anymore. So I, I watched this on television as they did brain diagnosis on a Christian channel with medical doctors. And so we can have that, what we need to serve the Lord. Look at us, uh, 2 7. It says in 1 7, we see there, but 2 7 also says if we consider what the Word of God says, uh, consider what I say, 2-7 of 2 Timothy. Paul tells Timothy, consider what I say, and the Lord give thee what? Understanding, Understanding in what? All things. Okay, so we don't have to be slothful, and we don't have to be ignorant either. Now, Proverbs 4, and we'll finish this first uh, point here. So Proverbs chapter 4 talks about getting wisdom. And so to be a diligent servant, we need understanding, we need wisdom, we need to exercise the power of God in our life and become diligent servants. But Proverbs 4 verse 5 to 10, get wisdom. Just says get it. Doesn't say uh, how much it's going to cost. But uh, get it, get wisdom, get understanding, get it, get it, get it, do you get it? Uh, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her, wisdom not, and she, wisdom, shall preserve thee. Love her wisdom, and she shall keep thee. Girls, aren't you glad that wisdom's called she? And nothing a man can do about that. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, get it. Don't you get it? And with all thy getting, oh, that word get is in there a hundred times. With all thy getting, get understanding. It said that the person that owned that farm uh, was void of understanding. Exalt her, wisdom, and she, wisdom, shall promote thee, wisdom. She shall bring thee to honor, when thou dost embrace her. She shall give to thine head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory shall she wisdom deliver to thee. Hear, O my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of thy life shall be where? What, what? Many, okay? So we see here the lesson location, going back to our story, an uh, exa examination story here. So we're examining uh, this uh, more than likely a man owned this place. And so uh, we see that he's void of power and, and, and no understanding. The field of the lazy and the farm of the ignorant. Now secondly, in verse 31, we see the lesson <clears throat> location first. And secondly, we see the le lesson looking. Now we're looking at this lesson as it moves forward. Verse 32. 
and lo, come. It was all grown over with thorns and nettles that covered the face thereof, and the stone wall thereof was broken down. Think of Proverbs 24, verse 31. And uh, so we see, as we're looking here in this lesson, we found the location, and now we're looking at the lesson itself. So we have uh, thorns represent an irritated life, uh, and the, it says here in low, all grown over with thorns. Think of it, a Christian and their life as they're entangled in the affairs of this life. It's a, it's a picture of, that's why he's given, the, he's not really concerned about the guy's property and building. The writer is concerned about the human life and the Christian uh, stewardship. So this life was all grown over with thorns. The house only represents the life of the owner. And when you drive down the street and you see houses that are taken care of, that speaks well of the owner. If you see a place all grown like this, all grown over and crumbling, falling down, who cares anyway, uh, then you know the character of that person is pretty much reflects who they are in that house, if they're in there at all. And uh, some houses are only fit for creatures, not people. Rats and mice and roaches and flies and other things. So it says the thorns there, this irritated person, if we're looking at a human life, they're ir irritating people. Uh, you can't find the fruit in their life. Uh, the nettles, which we would maybe call ivy today, there's, there are nettle plants which are irritating as well. Uh, stinging nettle plant, we call them here and uh, over in Europe. So it's covered in hidden, the hidden fruit and hard to find fruit in their life. And the wall represents an unprotected fruit, unprotected life. The walls are down and anything can come in and take over of that property. Low, low means get it, look at this, look at this. Look, don't you see what you're looking at here? It was all grown over with thorns and all grown over with nettles had covered the face thereof and the stone wall thereof was broken down. So we see this crumbling life, this, this uh, negligent life instead of a diligent life. Whoever built the house built, built it by being diligent, and whoever destroys it is simply negligent in, in this story, and in real life, by that way. And uh, I was talking to Graylin, he was talking about trying to find a decent rent, rent house that may sell his up from under him, and I can't find it. Usually you see signs in the yards for rent, for rent, for rent. I said, well, let me tell you what happened. The recession drove landowners out of their homes. They couldn't make their mortgage payments into rentals. And the uh, rental people are so sorry now that they've destroyed most of the homes that they've rented. And people, have, owners have lost their money. And Paul Williams used to come and play the piano for us sometimes on uh, night services. Uh, he owned three rentals on Broadway Avenue, and uh, they trashed all two of his houses, and he couldn't afford to pay his own mortgage. His health was failing, and he was a school teacher. And Paul Williams in Illinois, in a little back room of the church where he finally had to live, he died of a heart attack. He was just, it just wore him out. He lost everything. And a uh, good friend, and, and, but, you know, that these things happen. But that's why you don't see for rent signs just everywhere like you used to because the people are so trashy and so careless that they, they, they don't pay their rent and they destroy everything they touch. And it's, it's an epidemic right now. And that's why rents are so high because people, if you give them low rent, you get low life in most cases. So we have the location. We have the lesson as we are looking at it. Thirdly, look at verse 32. The lesson learned here. So we found the location, and we have looked it over, and we have examined it, and now what are we learning from what we see? <clears throat> there are four, four observations uh, in verse 32. Then I saw, number one, and considered it, 
well, number two. I looked upon it, number three, and received instruction, number four. This is a system here of learning. So we see here the uh, lesson learned. What is the lesson? He said, I saw. I, uh, we have observation there. We, when he said, I saw, so he's learning by observation. Then I considered it, which is consideration. So what he saw, he starts to process the information, consideration. And then he said, I looked, and he's evaluating now. He's, he's giving a, uh, what, what his, uh, you might say, intelligent evaluation comes up, what he's, his observation and his consideration, and then he's evaluating the situation. And then he received he received instruction. He, we see the word perception. This is what he perceived. In other words, one plus two plus three, right? And so he, the answer is uh, his perception. I received it. Four steps in learning here. And he says, uh, then I saw, verse 32 of chapter 24, Proverbs, then I saw and considered it well, so he, he really thought this over when he was examining the works of someone else. I looked upon it. He, he just takes double take here, and I received instruction. So we've seen the location. We've seen uh, him looking. We see him learning now. And so this lesson he learned is in verse 33. And so now, number four, we see the lesson on the word little. He learned something about how big little is. Then he says, this is my perception here, received it, yet a what? Little sleep, yet a little slumber, yet a little folding of the hands to sleep. All right, what do we see here? Just think about it. A little is always the beginning of a lot. <laughs> I know that's hard to fathom, you know, but uh, think it over. A little is always the beginning of a lot. And uh, so the Bible tells us to watch out for the little things in life. I'm sure this person that had this nice property never thought it'd end up like this. But it says, oh, they got a little negligent when they maybe used to be diligent, yet a little sleep. Start, maybe you got too old, like all of us, all right? Just, just couldn't handle it, got a nap, or, but, but maybe he never, maybe he had a nice home that he got that he really didn't deserve. Somebody else was diligent, and then a negligent person moves in and destroys it. I don't know. But these things happen in real life. This is the way the, the ball bounces in our world. But watch out for that little sleep. Watch out for the little slumber. Watch out for a little folding of the hands. The hands should be active. Not just fold them and la di da di da life. So we see a little sleep deals with our attitude. A little slumber deals with their mind, and the little folding of the hands deals with their body. Uh, quickly turn to 1 Corinthians 5, 6. 1 Corinthians 5 and verse number 6. And we see that Paul is warning us uh, in a major way to this wicked, backslidden church called Corinth. And he said, how did it get that way? He's writing a letter and telling us how Corinth got in the shape it got in as a backslidden bunch of people changing the Bible and blasphemy. And so verse number uh, says, six, what does it say? Your glory is not good, Corinthians. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. It started with a little slumber, a little sleep, a little folding of the hands, spiritually speaking, how they handled the word of God. So glory is, your glory is not good. They thought they were doing all right. He said, look, quit, quit bragging on, 
You folks are in sin. Your glory is not good. No, you're not. That a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Leaven is pretty powerful stuff. I was watching a special on uh, dog and cat food the other day. It interested me. Because the food we eat, if you give it to your pet, it may kill them. And one of the things is like uh, raw dough. Because the leaven gets in their system and ruins their liver. And so it was showing that the leaven, and we can handle that amount, but a little animal, a pooch, you know, their liver is about this big, and ours is about this big. And uh, so we have a little leaven, leaven's a whole lump. Look at Hebrews 12, verse 12, real quick. Hebrews 12, 12, and we'll finish up. So in uh, Hebrews 12, verse 12, it reminds us of some things here about lazy hands and uh, lazy feet. 12, 12 of Hebrews says, Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down. <clears throat> Don't fold them. Lift them up and the feeble knees and make straight paths for your feet lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. And so the Bible says we're to just get up and go. Stay busy for God. Yeah, we can hold our hands up and worship, but he's talking about moving forward because Hebrews is about chastisement for sinning against God uh, and walking away from the Lord. So let's go finish up back in Proverbs here. So we've seen the lesson location in verse 30, the field of the lazy and the farm of the ignorant. And then we've seen the lesson as they're looking and uh, we see the nettles and the thorns and the broken wall and the unprotected property. And then we see the lesson that was learned as he saw and as he considered, as he looked and as he received uh, the, the perception of what was really going on and then he said, it just, it just evident to me that it didn't have to be this way. But whoever owned this property, let it, let it go a little at a time. A little at a time. We should always be working towards hearing, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. That will keep us diligent if we remember that. Well done. The only time we hear well done is at the dinner table. You know, is it well done? Yeah. So here we have the lesson warning, last of all, in verse 34. Lesson warning. Short verse. So if you live like verse 30, 31, 32, and 33, this is what you will get 100% of the time. I mean, sowing and reaping is right here on the farm. So, shall, not might, not maybe, might, not could, it's going to happen. This is the way your life, my life is going to be. In shambles, so shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth. We went over this a few sermons ago. So shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth. Now, we have the homeless, we have the street people. We have those that move around the country and uh, looking for something. They're looking for somebody to actually take care of them and their addictions, basically. People that really want help will go to the agencies, they'll go to church programs, and they will try to get out of that, that deadly habit they form little by little. Uh, how does a person become uh, addicted to cigarettes? Well, just one at a time, right? How many remember when you smoked your first cigarette that you got choked on it? The body says, not, not on my watch. <laughs> but the peer pressure, the fear pressure of not being like the other cool kids, we went number two, smoked number three, the pack of 20 or how many, a carton, and then three packs a day. Then anybody ever hit four packs a day? No. I was up to three packs a day when I was a young packs here, and he can get another bed over here. <laughs> and the same thing with liquor and beer. You drank it, your body said, 
tried to blow it off. It really does. It's just nasty stuff. But you drink the first one, and it changes your morals. If you look at the uh, veterans had a plaque on the wall up in St. Louis many years ago in 86. I, 86, I was up there for my heart checkup. And it's, it gave you, what, what happens to your mind under one beer, two beers, three beers, four beers? And it shows the disintegration of your thought processes morally, starting with one beer. That's why guys want to buy girls one drink, okay, and just to change their moral perception. It's a scientific fact. A little at a time. So that your poverty shall come as one that traveleth. I mean, people that are addicted here, the, the travelers, as they call them, the hobos, remember, the gypsies and all those people. The gypsies usually move in families and, and bands of people. But hobos, you know, they had their little sack on the back and the, the little stick and they'd jump on the trains. We used to have them come in here off the, tr off the railroad tracks from Mexico back when I first took the church. One of them actually got saved here, went to work in the orchards. He had a routine. He'd come up from Mexico, Chihuahua, he'd get off in Springfield, he ate bologna and white bread, and he saved all his money, and he'd go to the uh, orchards of oranges in Florida, and then he'd go to New York apple picking up there, then he'd make his money, and he'd come back through here, get on the train, and go back to Mexico to take his money back to his family. And I got involved with the FBI over that uh, situation, somebody knocked him in the head and took his uh, IDs and did some terrible things to an 11-year-old girl, and put him in a prison over here, and uh, he got in touch with me and had hearts. It's amazing, you know, travelers, they, they create all kinds of situations. <laughs> but he came back through here after I led him to the Lord one night in the, in the hall, and uh, he came back here a year later, and he said, now, shouldn't I, the Bible you gave me, I, I was reading that, shouldn't I have been baptized after I get, got saved? A year later. And that night, before we got on the train, because I gave him a ride to, to the train tracks, we baptized him. Oscar was his name. Oscar Rodriguez, I think. Yeah. And uh, he had an ID. So we baptized him and, and gave him tracks, Spanish tracks, to take along with him to be our, our missionary. <laughs> he ain't mad at me, are you? Well, anyways, you know, people travel and things happen, but he was a, a hard worker, and he was really up here... He didn't try to get his whole family in. He'd he work and take money back to Mexico. But it says, you shall find your poverty here uh, as a one that traveleth. Have to keep moving. And then, thy want, want, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. But it says, thy want as an armed man, always wanting, turning to different uh, methods to succeed and fill the want, to turn to gambling and lottery and, and cheating and lying and sweepstakes and begging on the side of the road. And so that's the uh, end of the life of a little of this, a little of that, a little of this, a little of that, disintegration of your life. When we are older, we should have something to show for our Christian life. I mean, we should have something decent to show Serving the Lord. I don't talk about houses. I'm just talking about we should have, we should be able to look back and say, praise the Lord. You know, I praise with no regrets. But the devil will do everything he can to turn us from diligence to negligence and destroy what God has tried to build in our lives. It can take just a few hours for him to destroy us, especially watch the internet. Watch, I mean, watch it close because. When your information goes everywhere, then uh, there's no telling what can happen to your reputation. How many people know of people who lost their jobs by saying one word on the job that they took as a, as a slur or a smear to somebody in their company or a sports team, and, and their whole career is gone in one day? How many know that's happening? You don't know that? No, not really. Well, if you watch the news, you'd see... Somebody said something, they took it racially wrong, and so the, the company didn't want to take a chance on a lawsuit, so they fired this person after 20, 25 years of service, get them out of the company. It's, it's, that, it's happening that fast because information is sweeping across the world. 
So poverty as a drifter, you'll covet as a thief, and uh, we will try anything when we start failing our examination, self-examination, to see if we are in the faith. Let's finish up with one verse, 1 Corinthians 14, 38. 1 Corinthians here, 14, verse 38. So if a person wants to live like what we just saw, that's up to them. But we must be careful not to let the negligent ruin our diligence. We must keep not have anchors that we have to drag around like a ball and chain. In the ministry, you have so much of that nowadays. And that people just come to church to get stuff. They're not looking for a church where they can serve the Lord. They're looking for a program for their kids. Or their, uh, what do you got for us? And so instead of offering themselves like John Kennedy said, what? Ask what you can do for your country, not what your country can do for you. And so 1 Corinthians 14, 38 says, read it with me. Here we go. But if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. But let us not be ignorant nor negligent as we do self-examination. Proverbs 6, verse 6 through 11 says, Go to the ant. They never stop being diligent. If an ant is negligent, they'll just eat him. <laughs> they'll turn him into dinner. <laughs> and uh, so we know we're mature Christians. So uh, let's allow ourselves to be examined by ourselves and to be sure to remain diligent servants until we meet the Lord and, and really look forward to say, hearing, well done, thou good and faithful, diligent servant. So Thor, Lord, we thank you for the time in the Bible. And we've heard this story before, we've seen it before, but help us to not forget it every few years to go through it again and do a self-examination if we're being overrun and overtaken and, and not, not using wisdom and understanding in our choices. So now help us to be wise and go out and, and teach others how to do this uh, through the Word of God. Thank you for our Bibles tonight that keep us diligent. If we read the Bible, we become more diligent. And, uh, and when we neglect the Bibles, we become more negligent. So help us to examine ourselves now in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand and turn to page number 119. 119. 119. Go to the ant, thou sluggard, he said. 119 as we sing.